Hello, this is Dr. Krause with a quick video talking about um, Bodhi magnitude plots specifically and the effects of constant gains. I had a student ask me a couple of weeks ago about the difference between these two forms. Um, call it G1 is 1 over S squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared and G2 is omega n squared over S squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. So the only difference being omega n squared in the numerator and basically asking why is that significant or important, um, I don't know, on how it affects Bode plots in particular. And so I wanted to give a, an answer to this question, especially as we're coming up on our final exam, but hopefully this can also be helpful to other students somewhere who aren't in my class who might have similar questions. And so I'm gonna create um, transfer function instance, instances of both of these using um, the Python control module. And the main difference is to look at what happens as S gets really, really small. Um, obviously, in the case of G1, we get some number, which turns out to be exactly 1 over 987, because that's what happens when you set S equal to 0. So at low frequencies, G1 has a magnitude of 1 over 987, or roughly 1 1,000th. Whereas G2 is going to go to 987 over 987, or a magnitude of 1. Um, now the effect on the... So basically, G2 has a constant gain multiplied by it, which doesn't seem like a big deal, doesn't seem that significant, whatever. And because Bode plots are generally plotted with some kind of log axis axes on the y-axis, uh, well, usually both axes, but... Um, the y-axis is plotted maybe as decibels or whatever, which includes a log uh, function, and a logarithm is going to turn multiplication by a constant or multiplication into addition. And so the effect of this gain of 987 is going to be to shift the entire Bode plot upwards, like you're adding a constant to it. And so I created a little plot Bode function. So if we look at the Bode plots of these two transfer functions, G1 and G2. We see that G1 has 0 dB, which is what happens when you have a magnitude of 1, and G2 is shifted down uh, by about 60 dB. Um, if we were to calculate that, if we said 20 times the log 10 of 1 divided by 987, we would in fact get a negative 59.89 dB. So, not a super big deal, but this turns out to be, at least in the case of system identification, um, it's just kind of important to separate out the frequency of a pole from its effect on the magnitudes. And so it's nice to have that omega n squared in the numerator of a pole or in the denominator of a zero, so that if you change that frequency, it's not shifting your whole plot up and down. So let me illustrate that. Let's pretend that we make up some transfer function. Well, or pretend even better, this is coming from experimental data. So we have this G3, and let's pretend that we don't know its transfer function. Um, if we look at this, hopefully if you are studying dynamic systems, you recognize that we've got an undernamped pole. Uh, so this is like 1, so this is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, somewhere around 0.7 hertz. We've got an undernamped second order pole. Right around 10 hertz, we seem to have an underdamped second order zero, which we see 180 degree phase recovery. So there's a 180 degree phase drop at this pole, 180 degree phase recovery at the zero, and then another 180 degree drop at a second pole. So this is 100, so this is, I don't know, 90, 80, 70-ish, somewhere in there. So zero at 10 hertz, pole at 70, 75 hertz, and pole at 0.7 hertz. So if we were gonna to try to do system identification of this, um, I would just start going from left to right, and one of the things we could do is if we were to zoom in on the low frequency part of this, we can see that it has a, a y-intercept of something like negative 57.5-ish decibels, and so that's its low frequency magnitude of this thing we're trying to identify. So I could define that magnitude as negative 57 decibels, and I can undo the decibels by dividing by 20 and taking 10 to that power. And I know that I've got roughly a 0.7 hertz. So if I could create these two different terms. Now, if I use this form, 
where I've got the omega n in the numerator, and then I simply multiply by this magnitude that I've pulled off of the, the 0 dB, what will happen is that this green one is my first attempt at doing the system identification, and you can see that from about 2 or 3 hertz downward, it matches the system we're trying to identify very closely, whereas the one that does not have the omega n squared in the numerator the magnitude is way off. So I could zoom in, I could find that magnitude term, and I could shift the red one down, and we would be okay. And if you did all of that, it would work out to be exactly that we multiply by that, but that we also need to multiply by that guy. And so now they all agree. So whatever, do I find the magnitude before? Or do I find the magnitude after? It's just, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Well, the reason that it's sort of a big deal is if I then said, okay, now I wanna include this zero in my model. And so I recognize that to be at 10 Hertz and I'm gonna guess a damping ratio for now. If I define my zero, but I leave it with a magnitude one in the denominator, essentially ignoring its low frequency stuff, and I decide I want to modify or multiply by this, um, just quickly, yeah, that'll work. You can see that the green one, which used to agree quite well at low frequency magnitude, now has this zero included, or low frequency, yeah, whatever. The low frequency magnitude used to be in agreement. I now have a zero, but because my zero doesn't, when S equals zero has a value of omega Z ID squared, it's shifted the whole thing up. And so not having this term in the new so basically what I'm saying is that when I have to do system identification on a Bode plot so you can see by making that change I've now shifted the low frequency magnitude to to re-agree and it looks like my frequency is just a little bit off and so now I can tinker with my frequency but when I do so it's not going to affect this magnitude in any way whereas if this term weren't here and I just had a one, every time I change the frequency, I'm not just changing the peak location, I would also be changing the magnitude. Let's, um, I don't know, I think that's clear. I'm not gonna try to illustrate that any further. So I'm getting closer. Apparently I'm not as aggressive as I need to be at adjusting. So there we go. I seem to have the zero pretty well dialed in. And then again, I could come in here and I could add this other term. But if I don't have the omega squared term in the numerator, when I go ahead and include this in my transfer function, you can see that formerly my low frequency magnitude was quite good. Actually, the whole thing agrees pretty well up to about here. And now if I bring in this second order pole... I've got my pole at roughly the right frequency, but it's also screwed up my magnitude. So the main reason to always have omega n squareds in my numerator or denominator as constant gains, whether we're talking about poles or zeros, is now I can change this frequency and it's not messing up the low frequency gain, especially as I'm moving from left to right in my system identification. Everything I've done up to this frequency is not affected in any way as long as I um, am always having, choosing my numerator of my poles to have a gain such that when S is equal to zero, it has magnitude one. And then similarly, when I have a zero, I put a gain in my denominator such that when S is equal to zero, which means all of this would go away, I would have a gain of one. And so we're pretty close on, um, looks like I need a little bit less damping but I'm doing pretty good on identifying this system. I think that, that it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Obviously, I could turn that over to some kind of Nelder Mead optimization algorithm, fmin search or uh, optimize.fmin or whatever. Um, but yeah, having these kinds of terms when I'm creating Bode plots, making sure that when s is equal to zero, the, the gain of every individual term is one. Then when I 
add more terms, I'm not shifting my magnitude up and down. And that's the main reason for it is convenience of keeping my low frequency magnitude constant as I bring in more terms to the transfer function I'm trying to identify. Hopefully that uh, is helpful. Thanks.